Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how a computer routes. And for the most part, in this section on IP routing, we'll be focusing on routers. But we want to take a look at computers or endpoints on a network to see how they function and what their routing process is like so that we have an understanding from end to end of the entire process. So we'll focus on computers in this tutorial, and we'll take a look first at the route process. What decisions do they make in order to make a routing decision? What factors do they consider? And we'll introduce the concept of default gateways and figure out what they are and when they are used and when they're not used. We'll touch briefly upon the ARP process, the address resolution protocol. And as always, when we talk about routing, we'll take a brief look again at the encapsulation process, which is part of the routing process. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the route process on a computer is relatively simple. And it begins with the computer looking at the destination IP address of the packet it wants to send. And it asks itself a question. Is the destination in the same IP address subnet that I'm in, or is it in a, di or is it in a different one? So in other words, is the destination local to me? Is it on the same network segment? Or is it remote to me? Is it somewhere else on the network? If you're not yet familiar with IP addressing and subnetting, a subnet is essentially a group of consecutive IP addresses. So if you think of the numbers 1 through 10, it's a consecutive range, and that group would be similar to what a subnet is. However, for a subnet, though, it would be in, in IP address format. Okay, So take a look at the IP addressing tutorials if you're not yet up to speed on IP addressing and subnetting. But for now, the question is, is it in my subnet or is it not in my subnet? And depending on the answer, the computer does um, a different action. So if the answer is yes, the, the packet, the destination of the packet I want to send is in the same subnet as I'm in, then I'm going to go ahead and send this directly to the destination. And what I do is I figure out the Ethernet MAC address, and then I put the IP packet into a frame, and then I send it on its way. However, if the answer is no, the destination IP address is in a different subnet than I'm in, then the computer needs a little bit of help getting it there. And so if the answer is no, it says, OK, I'm going to go ahead and send this packet to my default gateway. And I'm going to rely on the default gateway to help me get it there. And so. Let's take a look at this concept of the default gateway. Essentially, when you have subnets, IP subnets, and they're different than one another, you need a router in order to go ahead and separate them. And so a default gateway is used in order to route packets between different IP subnets. Okay, So you can think of the gateway as literally a door to the rest of the network, as a door to other IP segments or other, other IP uh, subnets. And it's usually a router interface used as default gateway for a computer. So if you've configured your PC at home before, um, sometimes you're required uh, to put in a default gateway. Well, that's what we're talking about here, that particular concept. OK, so that's the basic routing process, the, the series of questions and actions that a, com a computer will take uh, based on the destination address. So let's now go ahead and actually take a working example of this and, and look at some of those details. OK, so here's our sample network. And what we have here is a router with two network segments. We have PC1 and 2 in the same network segment. And PC3 is in a different segment. So PC3 has a different uh, subnet than PC1 and 2. We see the IP address of each PC, and we also see the IP address 10.10.10.1. That IP address is assigned to the interface on the router, which is connected to this particular segment of PC1 and PC2. OK, so that's our basic setup. And we're first going to look at a scenario where PC1 is going to send a packet, and it's going to send it to PC2. So as we discussed, PC1 will take a look at the destination IP address in the IP packet. And so let's say this is our IP packet here. And it has a destination IP address in it, in that header of the IP packet. PC, PC1 says, well, is that destination in my local subnet, or is it in a different a remote subnet? Well, the answer here is it's in the same IP subnet. So in this case, the router default gateway is not needed. PC1 doesn't need to do it because it's connected to the same network as PC2 already. 
So then it's pretty straightforward. PC1 is going to go ahead and take that IP packet, and it's going to go ahead and put it into an Ethernet frame. And this is the basic of encapsulation. This packet now goes in here as the data portion of the frame. And inside the Ethernet header, we need a destination MAC address. And so in order for PC1 to figure out what that destination MAC address is, it looks at the IP address in the IP packet, which again, remember, is the IP address of PC2. And it uses the ARP process in order to figure out what the corresponding MAC address is. So what is PC2's MAC address? By using ARP, it sends out a message onto the network, and it gets a reply, and somebody says, hey, uh, PC2's IP address, 10.10.10.3, uh, corresponds to this particular MAC address, and it would be the MAC address of PC2. So PC1 gets that, it goes ahead and it fills in the Ethernet frame with the destination MAC address, and then from there it's pretty straightforward. It puts it onto the network segment, and here it's delivered to PC2, and then PC2 is going to go ahead and process that frame. So we looked at the routing process here, pretty straightforward because it's on a, it's on the destinations on the same subnet as the source, PC1 and PC2. And we took a look at, um, the encapsulation process, putting the IP packet into an Ethernet frame. And then we also took a look at the ARP process of figuring out the layer 2 MAC address based on the layer 3 IP address. Okay, so that's one scenario. And that's probably the, the simple scenario. Well, now let's go ahead and take a look at maybe a little, the, the scenario where we need to use the default gateway. Okay? So, this time, PC1 is gonna send a packet to PC3, which means it's sending a packet to a destination that's in a different IP subnet, a different network segment. So PC1 is going to go ahead and create its IP packet again. And in the header, the destination IP address is now going to be PC3's IP address. And so PC1, again, will ask itself the question, is PC3's IP address in the same IP subnet as my IP subnet? And the answer here is no. These are two different IP subnets. So in this case, PC1 is going to say, well, now that this is in a different IP subnet, I need to go ahead and send this to the default gateway, which is the router's IP address, in order to help me get it to PC3. So, just like last time, PC1 is going to create an Ethernet frame, because this is an Ethernet network, and the IP packet goes into the Ethernet frame, and this time, the destination MAC address is going to be a little bit different. Because remember, it needs to get here, all right? So the Ethernet address needs to be that of the router. The destination Ethernet address, the MAC address, is needed of the router. So again, PC1 is going to use ARP to query the network to help it find out the Ethernet address of the router. And it's going to say, hey, I need to know the MAC address, which corresponds to 10.10.10.1, which is my default gateway. Well, it'll get a reply from the network, and someone will tell it, hey, that IP address actually corresponds to this MAC address, which is the MAC address of the router's interface. And so from there, PC1 is going to go ahead and fill in the destination MAC address using the router's MAC address, and it'll create the frame, send it onto the network, and then it is sent to the router. So keep in mind, again, in the IP packet, we have the IP address, the destination IP address of PC3. But in the Ethernet frame, we're using the MAC address of the default gateway of the router's interface. So the hop by hop is going to be using Ethernet uh, addresses. And then the, the logical addressing of layer 3, the IP packet, remains the final destination. And so that's pretty much the whole process. At this point, the router is going to strip off the Ethernet frame so that it can take a look at the destination IP address. And then based on there, it looks in its route table, and it will go ahead and figure out it needs to send it out onto this network segment. And then it goes ahead and creates a new Ethernet frame. And then this time, it's going to use the 
Ethernet MAC address of PC3 itself and send it on its way. Okay, and so that is the process of using the default gateway uh, when routing to a different IP subnet. So to summarize everything we covered, pretty much we know the question a, a computer will ask itself is, is the destination local to me or is it remote? Are we in the same IP subnet or not? And based on the answer, it will either use a default gateway or it will not use a default gateway. In order to help it actually complete the routing process, meaning actually deliver a packet, the computer will use the ART process and it will also use encapsulation in order to create a frame, put it on the Ethernet segment. And then finally, we talked a little bit about really the purpose of a router when it comes to different IP subnets is in order to route packets between different IP subnets. So a router is needed in that case. And that explains why a router's interface in a particular segment, in a particular IP subnet, is used as the default gateway because that is the door to other net network segments and other IP subnets. Okay, and that's it. That is the tutorial on how a computer routes. Thanks for watching.